Okay, so um, speaking about how to do big projects or writing books or stuff like that. Um, the way I would, you know, for me, um, I was just talking about there, there's a gr there's greater capacity to be in flow states and infinite creative states when the ego is not bogged down by excessive meaning mm. or fear. Um, so this allows the infinite potentiality and creativity of the universe to flow through mm. more easily. Now when I was, you know, like if I was writing, I have written a book, uh, it's, it's available, you know, bulletproof piece, but um, when I was writing the book, you know, yes, I, I was trying to make it totally meaningless. You know, because I didn't want my ego to be ascribing meaning to what I was doing. I didn't want that. I want, because you want to be like, I wanted to be like more like a pure channel. So I didn't want like my ego, that this book is going to be really important or I have to do a really good job because that's all kind of static in the now. Mm -hmm. I didn't want myself. So I'd have to be like, I could say, like, I cancel my belief that uh, I have to write a perfect book. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold. I cancel my. I cancel my fear this book is going to be a failure and reflect on me. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief, uh, I cancel my fear that my grammar has to be perfect. I'm an infinite being subject. So these are all these limiting ideas or I cancel my belief that people are going to judge me uh, on my book. I'm an infinite being. So I don't want all of that stuff. Um, I can't, you know, I cancel so I'd be cancelling all of that. Also, when I was writing, if like my uh, negative thoughts were getting, were starting to build up into feelings, I would take a little bit of time out and sit with those feelings and just feel those en feelings out. So let's start saying I'm starting to get anxious because of the thoughts. I might like sit with them, the the uh, the fear for a few minutes and release that. Uh, I would also like. Um, I would also have a, a more like an in, apart from just having my alarm go, I'd have like an intuitive awareness if my vibration was starting to drop, I was starting to go into thoughts or feelings. And then I would, um, I would have either a feel the feeling or an observer break, just to go back to the observer and connect to what's observing, what's observing my thoughts and feelings and just have a, that connection to the observer. And so I'd reconnect to the infinite field and then go go into the writing, and then if I started to get bogged down into my thoughts and I felt my vibration drop, I'd take a little break and go back into the observer or sit with any feelings. So I'd have lots of mini breaks just to make sure that I, my, just being aware that if my vibration starts to drop, I start to go into negative thinking or feelings, that I take a little break to uh, reconnect up to a higher vibration so that I can be in these flow states while writing as opposed to being the negative thoughts and the negative feelings while writing. Um, so regular breaks uh, in doing that and cancelling cancelling all beliefs around it, you know, cancelling beliefs around success, around failure, around what other people will think about it, um, so that uh, it's totally meaningless. And when you're in those, when you're in the higher vibration, it, none, none of it matters, you know, whether you finish the book, whether it's great, whether it's a flop, it just doesn't matter. But that's a, that's like an effortless state, you know, an enjoyable state to be writing, because it's like, all right, you know, it's actually more, it's a much more contracted state to have, have to write a perfect book and everyone has to like it. It's a more contracted, contracted, fearful yeah. state, um, which then leads to you know, you can also feel your vibration in the words that you've written afterwards. So you know that if you're really connected, the vibration of the words has a higher energy. And if you start to write the words when you're in more of a fearful, contracted state, uh, the words, you know, um, tend to be less uplifting. Because there's some, something in the way you write when you're connected to the higher vibration, which somehow imbues the words with a different uh, referencing because you're referencing it from a higher vibration. So your whole out, you know, you're tuning into a higher field of consciousness. So everything has a higher vibration, but that's coming out of you and it will have a higher, higher effect on the reader reading the words and be more transformative. Later on, um, you know, when it comes to, so it's really nice to, you know, do the early drafts from that field. And then later on, you can have the more analytical sort of like, 
you know, polishing, you know, polishing the grammar and, uh, and all of that can come in later as a finishing touch. So that's, that's how I do, but really it's like trying to access those infinite fields of creativity and presence and be a channel for that. And therefore, when you get more involved in ego, it's like, what will other people think? I have to do a perfect job, or will this reflect on me? Am I doing a good enough job? And accessing the higher channels is the being in the observer. And, and can cancelling. And, feel and feeling feelings. Mm -hmm. So if there's like, you know, if you've got a strong belief like, um, you know, I, I, ca I cancel my belief that, you know, if I'm having a thought like, oh, my book won't be good enough. So I'd say, like, I cancel my belief. I cancel my. I cancel my belief that this book won't be good enough. I'm an infinite being, because that might be a persistent negative thought. So I can go to the observer of that, but it might be worthwhile me cancelling the persistent negative thought. But also, I think uh, you can have like the whole. How you know the question to ask is how am I making this meaningful? You know, or what are my big fears around this? Um, you see, and see if you can make it meaningless. Like, you know, like whether whether it's accept. You know, one of the great things is to know if it, if it's meaningful, then it's like it becomes effortless. Like if I don't if I don't care whether if it's it, meaningless. Yes. It yeah, because it's like. You know, like. Because I, I can't, you know, I think a lot of us come from these perfectionist backgrounds, so it has to be, it has to be a number, if I'm having this thought it has to be a number one bestseller or something, or, uh, or whatever it is, then there's a lot of negativity, there's fear, there's pressure, whereas... But then how is that, but then there's also, so like, I'm also open to the whole kind of law of attraction kind of thing, you know, yeah. putting out, I don't know, positivity or where you want to go, and this is sort of different to that? Well, you know, uh, see, so is there an individual that wants the glory? All right. Is there, is, you know, is it, is it my... So being a channel is like being an, an open gate to the infinite field. And there's no personal investment of what grace channels through you. Yes? Mm -hmm. So when, you, when you're doing enlightenment work, you don't want anything to be like a, a vested, separated ego interest. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not against any level of consciousness. Everything is fine. I don't. Whatever what anybody wants to do, but with the type of stuff I'm doing, mm -hmm. or with the observer, mm -hmm. it's it's like I don't want. I'm dissolving the idea of a separate me in relationship to the universe, or a separated me wanting to get outcomes for its own good. So I'm dissolving that idea of separation or the idea of a, a separated entity in fear needing to get its needs met. I'm dissolving that, that you know. But what if it's not just a, 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 just a single ego identified thing? What if it's like it wanted to be, to, it to be good for other people? Well, that, 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 that's also, <clears throat> that's a level, but that's also, the, okay, but that's also a level of consciousness. So... It's still, uh, it's a higher level of consciousness, but still a separated level of consciousness. So yeah, there's the gross ones, which are just very much just for my self-centered thing. Mm -hmm. But there's also like higher intentions as well, higher levels of consciousness. So now I'm, uh, I'm a more evolved separated consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want benefit for me and for humanity, mm -hmm. but there's still a level of separation mm -hmm. there, which is... A much higher level of consciousness. And then the other thing, where there's the, um, <clears throat> is then then it's to be then it's to be um, then it's to be in the infinite field. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a separate, an idea of a separated entity, trying to get its intentions met by the universe is dissolved. So then it's to be like a pure channel of the infinite. So and that's a place of infinite trust and just infinite presence and infinite flow. So, like most people who've been in those flow states, aren't telling, trying to like think about telling the universe what needs to happen, mm -hmm. you know, tomorrow and the day after, because you're in this state of infinite presence, trust, and flow, and the whole field is miraculously unfolding. So there isn't there isn't this separated entity trying to sort of mm -hmm. uh, give orders into the field that also dissolves. And when you get into those infinite flow states, it's more beautific than. Um, then the 
the higher evolved separated states. So in the higher evolved separated states, it's like, today I'm going to like feed all the poor in London, you know, and, and um, but it's, it's still a separated state, you know. So there still seems to be a separated state directing this. So it's a very, very high state, high level of consciousness. But then for me, there's another level of consciousness, which is beyond even the separated state, uh, trying to do good in the world. So uh, with me, I'm always trying to like not have a separated state uh, or, or dissolve the idea of a separated state, uh, putting out things into the thing. Um, why do I say that? Because when I've been in the infinite field, it's been far better than the separated field. So, and the infinite field is a place of infinite trust, so you don't need to be in this state of, of putting things out there into the universe, because you're one, you're one with the field, you're one with God, you're one with the infinite. And what I find is sometimes they're there, and then sometimes they get pulled back into the separate, you know, the separate and the ego identified. That, that, that's always going to be the case, because as you get nearer and nearer, you want to have longer periods in the infinite field and shorter per periods of relapse into the separated field. But, you know, as these happen, so these are the things that happen at the higher fields, like when you become a more evolved spiritual seeker, you want to be doing good all the time, but you, good as a separated person, yeah? But then you're, then you're having fields of the, being in the infinite presence. So, and then you, you lapse into, no, I want, to, I want to do good as a separated individual. So then comes the question, are you willing to let go of the payoff of being in a separated individual doing good? Well, are you willing to sacrifice that to be in the infinite field all the time, you see? So something like being, um, being the evolved spiritual seeker, being a separated spiritual seeker doing good in the world, so you'd have to like trade that payoff to be in the infinite field all the time. So the, these become more subtle payoffs, you know. You still, but you're still like an, you're still like ahead of most of the most of the individuals in the world because you're doing good all the time. But you're do, doing good as an individual. Or you know, like if it's law of attraction, you know, I'm going to use the law of attraction to do maximum good in the world as a separated person. So would you be willing to give up the law of attraction as a separated individual doing good in the world to be in the infinite field of flow? So these become, these become subtle, subtle things. But, you know, like I, I was like what Hawkins said. He says once you, once you realize there's levels of consciousness and that you can always go higher, most people are attracted to go higher. It's like if I realize that there's a difference between being a separated individual forever doing good in this world, but there's a higher level of consciousness where I can be in the infinite field, in the infinite presence and the flow state, then I'll want to, you know, for me it's like natural to gravitate to the higher field at some point when I, you know, because to experience a higher level of consciousness than the consciousness level I'm currently at, it's a, but you know, for, but not necessarily, I mean, some people can stay at levels of consciousness for a long time. Or you could be an, you know, like I could be like a, I might have chosen to just be a donut addict for my whole life and not, not evolve. But usually once you get on the spiritual bandwagon of growth, you do want to carry on with your spiritual growth. Even though you may stay at certain places for a long time, or you may relapse into lower fields for a period and then go back up again. Does that answer? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah.